Uh, Willard and I met in 2012, I think. Yeah. Uh, at a restaurant that doesn't exist anymore named Oxheart. We were on the opening team together. Well, it was uh, the full-time actual cook and I was like the the ragamuffin last person that was hired. Uh, there wasn't really any cook. distinction. <laughs> no, there was a pretty clear distinction when we first started. It was like, okay, Jason and Willett, you guys are in charge and Mark, don't try not to mess anything up and, uh, and you're, you're part-time, part-time employee. But I thought you were there pretty much just as much as we were. Uh, Same with Sam. I definitely was, but I was hired as a part-time employee. So. Y'all were just paid less. Yeah, that we was were really definitely paid difference. less. Yeah, so. Um, and that's where that's where Willard and I met, as far as I know, unless we met somewhere else and I'm not aware of it. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think so. All right, cool. Okay. So says, what was your first job? Uh, first job ever that's not cooking related? Sure. Yeah, my first job ever was I was a I don't know what you call it. I was a a bass a buggy go getter at Kroger. <laughs> Hmm. That was my first job. Yeah, it was. Uh, I did. I get. I applied to be a cashier, and I didn't get that. But I was allowed to get buggies out of the parking lot nice. in the in the Houston summertime. How old were you? I was 14 years old. Okay. And yeah. How long did you do? I did that for uh, about a year, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I did that for about a year. It was a. It was a. It was a crappy job, I'd say. <laughs> I just was outside a lot and it was very hot, I remember. Yeah, that was my first job. Um, my first job was at an Asian book distributor called... Thank you. We'll just wait for a moment. <laughs> my first job was at Typhoon Books um, and it's an Asian book distributor. So... My job specifically was selling to libraries and, you know, they kind of, they had multiple websites kind of targeting different customer bases, um, but I was um, essentially just trying to get our books into libraries because they have big budgets, so that was my first job. Your job sounds so much more efficient than mine. My, my, my that was out of college. That was, I was 23 maybe. So you didn't work in high school? Not real jobs. I mean, I had internships in Shanghai over, during summers, but not job jobs. How do you take your coffee? Well, I take my <laughs> coffee black. I don't like to add anything to it. Um, it can be cold brew. It can be drip. Uh, usually I do prefer espresso based, so Americano, iced espresso. Um, that's it. Just plain. Just let the coffee shine. Well, I don't really drink coffee, um, more of a tea drinker, but if I do drink coffee, which is where I did drink coffee today, I usually get a Cortado, um, or I'll just get whatever like fancy drip coffee they have, like whatever like is the new trend of the moment way to brew coffee, I'll get one of those. Like if it's a Chemex or some kind of weird pour over thing or whatever that is, I'll usually get one of those. No, I always, like, if I just, if I'm just drinking coffee, like, if I get a drip, I just drink it black. I don't put anything in it. Um, and the only other thing I'll do is I get a Cortado, but I don't normally, I don't add any sugar or cream or anything like that. Um, unless the drink just comes that way, like the Cortado does with, with milk, but yeah. Imagine yourself in three years. Uh, what do you hope will be different about you then compared to now? Yeah. Uh, imagine myself in three years. Uh, okay. I hope that in three years, um, I will, I don't know. I will probably be taking my daughter to school, which will be cool and different because she's two now, so she'll be five. Um, so that'll be different. Uh, other than that, I imagine that I will probably still be cooking something somewhere. Um, hopefully not too much will have changed you unless think you'll I, still be in Houston? I think I'll still be in Houston. I mean, I don't really, I don't foresee 
the need to move somewhere else. I enjoy living in Houston. Um, if I were gonna live anywhere, I don't know. I, I would like to, I'm not gonna rule out living somewhere else. I like moving around, but Ashley does not. My wife, she does not like moving around and she likes being close to family and families in Houston. So yeah, three years, uh, I don't know, hopefully I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have some more time off in three years. I'd say that. I hope in three years that I will have more free time <laughs> to spend with Ashley, my wife and our daughter. So that's, that's my hope. Right. Yeah. In three years, I really just hope to make more money <laughs> more than anything. Um, I'm guessing we'll still be in Houston, uh, probably still running Burger Chan, um, but I mean, maybe it's farther down the line. We, I think we're open to moving. We would, we do miss the Pacific Northwest, so we yeah, it's spent some there. time in Seattle and really enjoyed it. And personally, I'm very drawn to Vancouver or even Richmond, uh, well, Asian suburb, uh, just really good product up there. Really good seafood. Um, really good weather. <laughs> really good weather. Especially if you like rain. So <laughs> just a mild climate. I don't like Texas heat very much. I'm miserable 75% of the, <laughs> the year, like just furious every single day. Um, so I'd like to go somewhere where I'm happier. Yeah, I enjoy living in the Pacific Northwest too. Yeah, Portland was cool. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Ashley hated the weather though. It was not enough sun. Yeah. yeah, but I like that. It matched my mood, which is like gray, <laughs> just all the time. Emo. Just like, yeah, just like real like drab, uh, constant drizzle weather. It's nice. No pressure to like go outside and enjoy yourself. <laughs> What's one work related thing you want to accomplish in the next year? Um, one work related thing in the next year. 2021. <laughs> All the good things. Um, I hope when we reopen Burger Chan that we can figure out a better system, that we can really fine tune everything, make everything more efficient. Uh, all to better serve our customers. Because I think even four and a half years in with the first location, uh, we're still just figuring it out a lot of times and, and uh, the food's great but I think some things suffer as a result and so I think I really hope with the time that it takes to open up the second storefront that we can figure some of those those issues cool uh, one work related thing that I hope to accomplish next year would be to for the people that have been at Squabble, the restaurant that I am the chef of, to um, kind of get them into roles where they can really feel empowered to like run the restaurant and feel, you know, a sense of ownership of what's going on there and, um, you know, just have more of a role in the kind of restaurant runs and to uh, hopefully, I don't know enjoy themselves at work more so just to like kind of promote my team and uh put them in leadership roles and let them kind of like take take charge of things over at squabble allow me to to take like more of a big picture role and support them in their growth and their careers so yeah that's what i would love to happen in the next year is to like get get everybody coached up and uh, able to fly <laughs> in the next year. Is this year one for Squabble? Um, 2021 would, we opened in April, uh, so this next April would be two years. Okay. So we're a year and a half, I guess. Yeah, this is, this is the second year, and then I guess next year would be technically 
the third year. This is still relatively new. Yeah, no, it's yeah. pretty, pretty, pretty new. Cool. Have you ever disliked something and then changed your mind? Yeah, like every day. <laughs> I think that happens. Um, especially if, like as it relates to food. I don't know. I feel like my palate just changes all the time, or as like change, especially as I've gotten older. But I really hated coconut a lot. Like growing up, just just didn't like it at all. Um, probably particularly because of desiccated coconut and the texture of it. But now I kind of like that weird crunchy texture. Um, uh, I used to, I didn't like boba before when I first tried it. And like now I just can't get enough boba. I really like the chewy texture. I was like not a fan of that kind of like chewy, almost kind of sometimes gummy texture, like between boba and like tapioca things in general. And now I love those things. So what's your, um, your go-to boba place and your go-to order? Uh, my go-to boba place would be God, what's the name of that place that's like right across the street from Squabble? Uh, it is, I can't even think of the name of it right now, but. Oh, Tepresso. Yeah, Tepresso, there it is. Yeah, I, that's my go-to place because it's literally across, I can walk to it. Uh, it's just like so close and convenient. So that's my go-to bubble place. Uh, my go-to order, depends on the weather. Like these days, um, Pojicha with uh like a there they can do like a hojicha horchata with uh, rice milk that i am very fond of and i prefer it hot but uh, i'll also drink it cold it's better hot because the rice milk particles don't kind of like get cold and sell to the bottom and kind of take on a weird texture but when it's hot it's uh quite enjoyable so yeah that's my that's my go-to boba spot and go-to order right now um yeah. Do you remember the question? Um, do your things you dislike? Have you ever disliked something then changed your mind? Um, very few times. I mean, <laughs> like when it comes to food, things I don't like, I'll try over and over and over again regularly. So it's not like I avoid them. You know, I mean, I guess taro root is something that's kind of an in-between. I grew up hating it. Um, I've continually eaten it. You know, when it's just right, it's acceptable. Like, you know... <laughs> like taro root chips? <laughs> like chips are fine. You don't really taste them. Um, if it's a sweet application, it needs to be really sweet. If it's a savory application, it needs to be very savory. Um, but if I'm just tasting the taro itself, I don't like it. Um, certain vegetables, that remains true, like um, I don't know the, the English name, it, it'll pop up on the screen, I'll, I'll Google it later, but it's uh, like a wet gourd, so... It's hmm. very spongy. Spongy. It's got okay. like really hearty seeds, um, kind of a mucousy flesh texture, so, and as you really saw it, it just keeps <laughs> exuding liquid. Yeah. So you're like eating wet tissue with hard seeds. Okay. And I have that to- That should be the menu description. Yeah, wet to tissue, day, hard I seeds. I don't understand people that enjoy it. It is <laughs> the most revolting vegetable I've ever had. Well, I was thinking something non-food for you would be cardio. Partying? You didn't like partying? No, cardio. Oh, I thought you said partying. I was cardio. Like, you didn't like to party and then you love to party. I don't like cardio, but I realized the importance of it uh, for for heart health and also for losing weight. So it's not, you know, cardio is really dependent on what you're doing. So it has to be, the only time I enjoy it is if it's fun. Um, but so like fun would be like if I'm on a recumbent bike sitting in front of a TV and watching TV for four hours, that's fun. Um, I would watch TV for 25 <laughs> hours a day if I could. So, yeah, I mean, cardio itself, not a fan, but. On a side note, dude, what are your TV watching habits? My TV watching habits? Um, I don't watch a lot of TV. I use it to help me fall asleep at night. I'm just usually at the restaurant all the time. So like when I get home, I put Sports Center on because it make it like 
immediately makes me go to sleep. I, like people start talking about whatever sports team something, and I'm like, out. Oh, I'm just done. Um, I watch a lot of anime. Um, if I am watching TV, and then I also watch whatever my wife is watching because she has a lot of TV shows she follows, and I don't really care. So I'll watch if it's on TV. I will literally watch anything. I watch. Lots of uh, infomercials, and yeah, no, I love watching infomercials. Real Housewives? No, I don't ever buy anything, and Real Housewives, I've never watched an episode of any of that, but if it was on TV, like, if I, if I come home and the TV's on, like, whatever is on TV, I'm just gonna watch what it. Just because. do chefs watch cooking shows? Uh, I can't speak for all chefs. I personally don't watch cooking shows unless it just so happens to be on the TV. And then, yes, I will watch anything. I, I watched uh, I watched an episode of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives the other day. That was uh, entertaining, I guess. <laughs> I sometimes watch uh, whatever is the new Bobby Flay show that comes on TV. I used to watch like Chef's Table and stuff on Netflix, but I can't keep up with series. I get bored like if it's more than like five episodes or something and I'm just like I don't, I don't want to watch this anymore so have you ever seen Top Chef? yeah I've seen Top Chef I actually watched like a uh, half of a season at one point I it was the one where what was it the chef from Portland uh, Gregory Gorday was on that mm -hmm. and like the Voltaggio brother was on there or something like that I, I watched most of that season I don't know what season that was, but uh, I watched a good part of that season. I thought that was entertaining. Do you have any aspirations to be on any sort of show? Not really. Um, I, w I would maybe like to do it just to be, I don't know, I would, I would like create a persona while I was on the show, like that wasn't myself at all, uh, to like uh, help with the ratings on the show like I would want to I would need like a rival someone that I hated and I would like uh, take on some weird I don't know like I'd, I would want to be the villain I think if I was going to be on the show the person that everyone was like oh man Mark that the guy sucks I don't like him yeah I think that would be cool to be that person on the show um, but no I don't really want to I don't really want to be on any of those shows uh, at just I don't know I don't just seem like the situations that they're in uh, don't are just like really contrived and I don't imagine that they really accurately depict anyone's skills with cooking <laughs> very much it's like here's this situation that you would never ever find yourself in with a bunch of stuff that you would not use uh, to make this happen uh, this is more like of a resourcefulness uh, indicator than it That's is true. of like your actual well, ability sometimes to cook. you have to be resourceful in the kitchen that's true, um, but probably not on the scale that they depict in this show. Right, I, as <laughs> chef or restaurant owner, you always have the option of just throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. We're not going to use it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, even then, I don't think that it depicts, ac like, accurately, like, what you would face kind of generally. I think normally you can at least to a certain extent, kind of predict some of the things that might happen, even if you can't predict everything. But like the, the, the scope of the things that would go wrong in your restaurant are mm -hmm. only so much. Yeah. There might be like things that you don't foresee that happen, but like, I don't know. Someone like throwing away your stuff uh, is, a, is not too uncommon, but for the sake of the TV show, like somebody like going behind you after you did something like turning your heat all the way up <laughs> to like watch your reaction when it's all destroyed and ruined. I think it's probably not super accurate, um, but I don't know. Who knows? I don't know anything about those shows, so maybe. Do you ever get recognized in Houston? Me? No. Uh, no one knows who I am. <laughs> I never, I, I've never gone anywhere and had someone like say anything about the fact that and some people think that I look like Marcus Samuelson, maybe I've gotten that before. And people just that. people just ask me if I'm Ethiopian randomly, but no one no one recognizes me, which is fine. I like to be left alone, so I don't know if I would enjoy that very much. Yeah. Do you, do you get with? Do you seek any of that recognition? Huh? Do either of y'all seek any of that recognition? Not me. No. 
Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's potentially tiring to be recognized and recognizable. Um, but I want to be more successful. So, how do I, you succeed but not be famous or not be recognizable? Yeah, is the question. It's definitely got its like it's useful to be recognized I think and like you know as a means to an end like you're just saying like to get to be more successful to be recognized I think is uh, probably an easy an easier way to have success um, like if you like it would be great if you were very fortunate and had a very circumstantial um, fame where only certain people recognize you. Only the people who need to recognize you recognize you and it brings you success and the average person does not recognize you. So you go everywhere and no one's coming up to you. But that's kind of dreaming <laughs> a little bit too much to think. I just want to be recognized by people who will... That you want to recognize you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have one of those like men in black like you don't know me. <laughs> I feel like there would only be so many people that would recognize you with like any amount of success that you would have in the culinary industry and the restaurant industry. Like, I got doubt yeah. that just like you could go anywhere and someone would just recognize you just because your restaurant is successful. Or... That's true and I think that's especially true in Houston. Mm. I bet, you know, I bet even Justin, you and Chris Shepard can go to some parts of Houston, some places, and no one would know who they are. Yeah. Yeah, no, we have some friends, and, and we were men mentioning Chris Shepard's restaurants, and we're like, who's Chris Shepard? And I'm thinking <laughs> back, because I'm like, wouldn't everybody know who Chris Shepard is? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess if you are, if you follow Houston food oh. scenes, then you would, but like, yeah, if you don't, then why would you, <laughs> why would you know? People ask, like, oh, where'd you work? And they'll say Oxart, and they'll be like, uh, that was a very specific uh, time and place in Houston food scene that, yeah, if you weren't paying attention, even if you were like, in the food scene, you just like blinked for, a, you know, a, some period of time and you, maybe you missed that thing that happened. Uh, the, the scope of that restaurant was pretty small, so I imagine that there's probably people just going about their life that maybe even are into food that might have just missed it because they... I mean, but it's funny because of the... The amount of acclaim the restaurant received even on a national stage for so many locals to not know about it it's just kind of odd yeah well if you just like eat stuff that you feel comfortable with and maybe you don't venture outside of your you know neighborhood or the hmm. things that you tend to eat you could very easily miss all kinds of stuff <laughs> that that pop up that are popular if you're just like oh, i just like to go to my neighborhood whatever are the whatever is in the vicinity of my house i'll just maybe i just missed that whole thing because i don't read the houston chronicle or any national food publications and i just right. wasn't aware of that so yeah mm -hmm. aside from necessities what one thing could you not go a day without is coffee a necessity no i mean I guess coffee, I don't, uh, I drink coffee just about, I mean, I drink coffee every day and it starts as soon as I wake up and continues into the afternoon and if I know I'm not getting coffee then I will just go straight for the Advil because I know that's coming. <laughs> okay, uh, not a necessity that I can't go without daily. I don't really know if there's anything that I could put in that category. If I just to, for the sake of answering the question now probably yogurt i really like yogurt a lot and i eat yogurt almost every day um i like making yogurt uh and i make yogurt so that i can keep up with my insatiable yogurt appetite so i <laughs> i would say yogurt i eat a lot of yogurt everyone at at the restaurant makes fun of me because i choose to eat yogurt over most things. I only eat yogurt because non-fat Greek yogurt is high in protein and low in calories. But I don't ah, like it. Man, I yeah, you are getting all the bad parts of it. I like high fat 
yogurt. I want whole milk, like delicious full fat yogurt. No, I need um, the protein content to be greater than 10% of the total calories. Okay, I've never <laughs> considered how much protein content my yogurt contains. I will rely on artificial sweeteners to make it palatable. Yeah, I yogurt and granola and fruit is like uh, something I eat almost daily, and I choose to eat it for most meals. If I if I can, I will eat. <laughs> I will eat yogurt and granola over most I, things that I can consume. I think you said fruit as well. And I don't. I don't naturally like fruit, but Man. I force myself to eat it Man. usually with my yogurt, just because I know it's good for me. It's, it's just so like good, I gotta eat fruit. So every day it's like. Can I remember to eat two or three servings of fruit in one sitting just to get it out of the way? Because I would rather eat more meat, more eggs, more carbs. Just oh man, I'm complete opposite. Just I love fruit. So boring. I would it's eat just fruit. Sweet. It's not. Yeah, not it's delicious. <laughs> All fruits are delicious, Good. and the the fruits change with the seasons, and I can like you know depending on what's going on, what time of year it is. Like it's coming up on citrus season, so I like. I love citrus. Citrus you can have all year. Yeah. It's well, boring. you can, but like, I like it. <laughs> it's just boring. And then depending on where you live, the fruit's different too. Like in the Pacific Northwest, there's like, they have yeah. cherries. Like, which I mean, is when great. I go on vacation to Asia, I am excited about yeah, go wax on apples yeah. and certain fruits that we don't get here. But here, it's like, unless you're paying an arm and a leg for the exotic fruits, mm. you're just limited to the same stuff year after year. So it's not not super interesting I find a lot of interest in fruit fruit is very interesting to me <laughs> and delicious does Ashley share your love yogurt? love of yogurt no she does not uh, yeah I don't know many people that do also like different varieties of yogurt there's so many different kinds of yogurt like you know your mesophilic yogurts and your thermophilic yogurts I where don't know what that means. well it's like there's some yogurts you can make where you don't need to incubate them at like warmer temperatures like normally like for I don't know, like European style yogurt. Uh, you would culture your yogurt somewhere between like 100 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then there are some yogurts uh, like Mazzoni, uh, which uh, you can culture at room temperature, like in the 70s and 80s. Um, Does it just take longer? No, it happens in the same amount of time. Okay. The yogurts are usually just different textures. Like Mazzoni is like really kind of like a stretchy, textured yogurt it's like uh it it looks solid and then like if you move it around what's that called is a uh viscosity you, yeah but it like kind of looks solid but it's kind of has a, the consistency of like the childhood toy gag i don't know if you remember that it's like it but it's like a little more it's looser than that but it's like a similar like so it's property like you used a little xanthan gum yeah it looks like you use xanthan gum and it's kind of stretchy uh some people find that off-putting but i don't know there's like there's different you know different parts of the world different cultures have different yogurts that are like cultured dairy products yes frozen yogurt is also delicious i don't really eat frozen yogurt ever i don't really count that as my yogurt that i would eat daily but it is delicious uh, I've, yogurt? yeah i buy yogurt i sometimes can't I forget to make yogurt? I just don't have time, and yeah, I just buy I buy yogurt. I definitely have preferred brands of yogurt, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'll buy yogurt. I like uh, when I lived in, I kind of got turned on to uh, Nancy's yogurt. Living in Portland, uh, that's like a, I don't know something in Oregon. Like they have like a yogurt brand called Nancy's that you. I don't really think you can find here unless you go like Central Market or something. But um, that yogurt's good. Uh, what other yogurt? There's um, there's this like sheep's milk yogurt that I really enjoy. That's like crazy expensive. Um, comes in like these little like margarine-looking tubs. I can't remember. I think Bellwether is the name of the creamery that makes it. Uh, it's a delicious yogurt also. And yeah, I don't know. Yogurt's good. Learn something new about Mark. I really like yogurt. Love yeah, yogurt. I love Feels yogurt. Like I like <laughs> no, just yogurt is not something I go I love for. Yogurt too. We used to go to this Greek diner and he would get like this ginormous Greek omelet and I would get yogurt, mm. and honey, and I don't know if there was anything else. 
there's granola. Yeah, so like, yeah, at the restaurant we have yogurt and granola on the brunch menu yeah. solely so that I can have yogurt. That's usually the case. Like people will ask <laughs> why is this on the menu and they'll be like, oh, just the chef eats it. Yeah, that's because <laughs> I want to eat yogurt. No, so, no, no. For you guys. Some of it's yeah. for me. At Burger Chan too, there's going to be like a whole anabolic section, like anabolic French toast, non-fat. What does that Greek even mean? Yogurt. It just means for muscle building. So it's uh, okay. like high protein, low calorie. French toast? What is it going to be? It's just literally what you, what egg whites. Oh, okay. Like that's your pure liquid. It works pretty well. All right. Um, use a good amount of artificial sweeteners. Um, I used to eat that quite a bit. And then I kind of, I kind of go through phases. I'll try one recipe. It'll taste good. I'll eat it for two weeks and then I won't eat it for like five months. I'll be eating other <laughs> stuff then because I'm okay. just so sick of it. <laughs> Huh. Never heard of that before. Anabolic French toast. Yeah, there's like a whole anabolic line of recipes that you can find on YouTube from different um, YouTubers and just I get some inspiration from there. Half the time, the recipes are not so great. Like... Yes, most recipes you can find online though, I think. <laughs> yeah, like they will use non-fat Greek yogurt as the base for it's really off. Mm. Especially because I hate the flavor of you. You, of you hate yogurt, right? Yogurt. So when I taste the yogurt, I'm just like, nope, not ranch. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I guess if you put mayonnaise in it, maybe maybe that would help. Yeah, but you're not supposed to, so you would find uh, like okay. a. So I mean, the yogurt is the mayonnaise. Oh, is it because part. of the fat? Oh, is that what it is? Like you don't want the you don't you're want the fat. Are cutting out as much fat as possible uh, most days. Okay. To go into a calorie deficit. Got it. Hmm. I don't think I could do that. Um, let's see. If you had to choose only three adjectives to describe yourself, which would you choose? I hate these questions. Um, <laughs> three adjectives to describe myself would be uh, probably soft talker. I'm a very soft talker. I speak very softly. Um, tired. Hmm. These days, I think would be a very good adjective to describe myself. Uh, and um, tired, soft talker. I get one more. Um, let's see. I don't know. Uh, let's go with. Uh, let's go with thoughtful, maybe. Yeah, sure. Let's say what a, a positive one in there. I had to think a lot to yeah, say I'm a very, thoughtful. I'm a very thoughtful person, I think. Hopefully. Well, I'm definitely also tired. I wake up tired <laughs> every single day. Could be sleep apnea or something. I'm not... I don't know that I'm in a rush to really figure it out, but I just wake up tired. <laughs> Sometimes I'll feel suddenly awake at 9 p.m. for like an hour. It'll feel pretty good. Um, Hungry. I'm hungry very oh, often, okay. especially right. um, when I'm trying to lose weight. And it's like, what I do to lose weight isn't so much like any kind of weird diet. It's just, it is more lifestyle changes, but it makes me even hungrier. Like I just get hungry really easily because <laughs> I'm eating things that are low in calories all the time. Mm. So I'm eating all the time. So tired. Tired and hungry. hungry uh -huh. I like a baby. <laughs> um, third adjective. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, thoughtful would work. Yeah, you no. can't do that. Okay. You gotta have your own. Um, hmm. Active, I guess, because I do like to go climbing and I do like uh, working out. Um, just, I actually have more time now that the restaurant's closed than I have in the past, so. Speaking of which, you want to go climbing? Yeah, that'd be cool. I don't know when I would have time to do that, but. Right now. Right now? No, I got to get back home. Okay. I got, I, got, I have a speech therapy to do with, with Amory. So and also, it's about, it's about to be my shift of, uh, of watching her, so Ashley can do other stuff. <laughs> Oh, 
that to subscribe, will it? Subscribe that person. Mm -hmm. Um, I always say weird when I describe will it. I think that's a, I think that's a, a good as to describe will it. It's very vague too, so it could be like anything. Uh, I'd say that will it is very funny. I think that was a very funny person. All right, you got your three. Oh, that's it. Okay, cool. That was only two. That was only two. Weird, vague, and uh, this weird. No, I thought that vague, vague. I was describing oh. vague uh, as for the word weird used no. to describe him. Uh, and then one more. Um, I think that well, it's kind of a reserved person. I think I would say reserved would be a word I would use to describe Willet. So those yeah, are my. Yeah, that's true. I am private in some ways. With. Mainly just at a young age, I realize when I say everything that comes to mind, I always get in trouble. So <laughs> I usually stay silent for a while. Um, usually let someone else say the wrong thing first. Yeah. Before you let your weirdness come up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then when people really get to know me, they're like, man, that dude is really weird. Um, I think I Mark, nailed Will it. I Mark think I feel like I did good there complicated but i don't know if that's the adjective i would use um on the surface he tries really hard to be an asshole <laughs> try really hard i think asshole might be a good but adjective he is also very thoughtful and considerate in some of the small things he does so like Aww. he will he's like the kind of guy who likes to like he'll go to your station and knock all your shit over and laugh about it so it's like everyone sees that oh man that's that's that asshole mark <laughs> and then he'll go and like do something secretly that's nice so it's weird like he is <laughs> he is playing that persona he talked about for cooking uh, yeah, competitions on tv <laughs> but he plays that persona in real life as well <laughs> so who is the real mark that's mm. that's the question okay all one adjective yeah, that's all one adjective. No, I don't know. I mean, they all fall under complex, but I guess all of us are complex. Some people are quite complex. I think so, I'm pretty simple. I guess I you could go with whatever adjective asshole would be. Asshole's a noun, right? So. Uh, yeah. Assholeish. Um, okay. Um, secretly considerate secretly considered <laughs> and He's complex a nice guy. yeah a closet, He's a closet nice, guy. nice guy okay like gordon ramsay <laughs> that's only two that was three complex. he said complex oh. yeah and he said secret i don't feel like thinking something. of another one we'll just make complex the third one those are all not adjectives by the way yeah but you can <laughs> make them adjectives if you had the power to change one thing about the restaurant industry, what would that be? Oh, I wrote that one. Oh, all right. Yeah. Nice. One thing. I don't... This is a hard question in yeah. that... I don't know that... I mean, restaurants are broken. That's a, not even th something up for debate, but... The things that are broken about restaurants extend to a lot of things in society. So to say that only restaurants need to be saved or need to be fixed is oversimplifying it. Um, obviously, you could talk about low wages, but that applies to a lot of things. You could talk about the harassment, um, sexual or otherwise, but that's rampant in a bunch of industries. Um, you could what was it? If you could fix one thing? Yeah, one thing. Or you could change one thing. If you had the power to, power change, to change one, one thing. thing. Yeah. It's... I mean, I think... The biggest difficulty with restaurants is most people who work in a restaurant aside from certain managers and servers don't make a living wage a livable wage they don't make enough money and there is no real progression to get to that point where you're thinking i'm saving for the future and inevitably then 
for people who want to cook for their whole lives, you're kind of forced into taking jobs you may not want just for money, or you may be forced to thinking you have to open a restaurant to make more money. It's not something, it's not really a career where you can just simply focus on the thing you love and keep making more money to the point that you can, you can retire. Um, I, it would be nice to change that so that people who work in restaurants make enough money uh, to lead, you know, not just a shitty life, but a normal life. But that's not solely a restaurant issue. And when you look at everything overall, there are just so many problems when it comes to money. So I don't even know that necessarily making sure restaurant workers make more money solves anything. So, but as someone who works in restaurants, it would be nice if everyone that worked there didn't have to work two or three jobs and didn't have to constantly worry about uh, the future and how they're gonna, gonna make more money in the future. Well, I've had the power to change one thing. Yeah, I, I agree that restaurants are broken. Um, the system that restaurants are under is broken. And I guess if I could change one thing to oversimplify it all, I would put more power in um, compensation in the hands of the people who do the day-to-day -day work of making restaurants um, operate. So um, to shift like the balance of power from ownership uh, and the money from ownership and kind of like more evenly distribute that to the people that actually make the restaurant happen on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, sounds really communist of me but uh, <laughs> just to yeah to basically kind of even out the distribution of uh, wages and uh, power between the people that work in restaurants so it's not kind of like society uh, writ large where about 10% of the people hold 90% of the wealth and power um, to just a little bit more evenly distribute that to the people who do the heavy lifting of the restaurant. So that would be my, have my one thing. Do aspirations of opening your own place? I do have aspirations of opening my own place. Um, and if I did, I would, I don't know, there's so many like alternative models that I maybe would consider. Uh, maybe something a little more than long lines of like a co-op type situation, which I don't know exactly sure how that would work, but. Uh, a yogurt shop? No, I don't think I would open a yogurt shop. That's just something for myself. I don't think that it's always great to like take everything that you like personally and like attach it to like the need to make money because I think that it can sometimes lessen your enjoy your your the pleasure you derive from that thing. So I think that I would just keep yogurt as my own little side project passion thing that I would just have for me and then uh, yeah the restaurant would be something something else yeah did but, I cut you off from your, your description of the co-op model oh no that was just a kind of a random idea I threw out there um, yeah no I think uh, finding out a way to put ownership and uh financial compensation in the hands of the people that won the restaurant so that would it just be the owner like myself that would um, reap the benefit of all their hard work I think that that would be something that I would look to try and do don't know how realistic it is maybe it's kind of a pie in the sky type situation but I'd definitely be willing to like make way less money and uh, have less ownership in the restaurant if it meant that the other people in the restaurant could take care of their families and stuff better and uh, f 
feel more entitled to ownership in the restaurant. Might create a bunch of problems, but uh, usually trying to solve one problem creates other problems. So you know, I, that doesn't mean to not try and solve the problem, but it just uh, it'll just be something to figure out <laughs> at some point. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That was that was the question, right? The change one thing thing. Yeah, I did. I think I answered it. Cool. 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 All right, this was fun. And who should we uh, interview next? Who should we interview next? Uh, are you asking me? Oh, I don't know. Uh, what types of people are you trying? Are you trying to interview other food people, or? I, mean, I think it's fun to interview food, food people because a lot of times you just see them in the kitchen and you know hmm. really get to know them beyond the menu or what you read in the paper. That's true. Um, hmm. Mm, I don't know. Who do you want to? Who do you want to? To to get to know beyond food. <laughs> I don't know. There are a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, you should you should talk to Hori. I would like to. That would be fun. I would love to hear Hori's thoughts on stuff. I don't really hear him talk very much. Sandals are overrated. <laughs> yeah, we love Hori Hori-san. That would be a great person to talk to, I think. Me too. Do you want to interview him? Uh, I would be nervous to interview yeah. Hori, I think. Yeah, because I would feel like, I don't know. He, I, I don't know a, a ton about Hori outside of just like, just interactions I've had with him. Um, in passing, either me eating at Kalarabada or like some random event thing that he was doing that I was also a part of um, so I'd be nervous that I would ask some stupid questions and he'd be like this yeah, is dumb see, I've come up with a question so all you really have to do is answer the questions and listen to his answer yeah that's true well yeah no, that, if, that, if someone else came up with the questions so that if he hated them all that I could say I, I didn't come up with these questions I'm just asking them and then yeah that would be great I could totally do that but if I had to come up with questions and interview Hori I think I would be Maybe nervous about that <laughs> I would be pretty intimidated. 